Buckle up, buds. It's a lot of and I don't mean bro science. I am AQBS and this is Back to the Barber. I'm just going to go with it. I think androgenic alopecia or androgenetic alopecia is and BS does not stand for bro science. And I'm going to tell you why in this video. The reason why I was bold enough to attempt to restore my high school hairline going from totally bald, nothing on the top. And in my mind, I can reverse all of my lost hair. There's so much information out there. So I'm just going to hit on a few things. And I don't even know how I'm going to put pictures and videos to this because it's. Here's why. Excuse my French. How in the world do we say that there is a genetic final form type of theme to male pattern balding. You're 19, you go totally bald. Somebody else is 79, they still have a head full of hair. And we state, well, that 79 year old is supposed to have hair and yet 19 you don't. But then we associate hair loss in every other capacity with humans or animals when things are just fall off the body or we lose these things, we associate that with a current problem, right? It's not that if your dog loses fur, we say, well, dog just has, you know, dog alopecia. We know that certain lines of, of dogs have this problem worse. So we know, but when we think of it that way, we don't think that when Rover gets to be one years old, Rover is going to lose his hair and that should be fine. We say Rover is in a family line of dogs that seem to have allergies. So what we do is we're careful about what type of food we feed the dog because he or she will develop fur loss. Is that not androgenic alopecia? Because we would never think of our six month old dog as just, you know, a dog that's just going to go bald on the top or on his tail or on his stomach or his butt. We say, when we see that, we know that he or she is having an allergic reaction to something that we are feeding them, uh, giving them something inside of, let's just say the, the, the towels that we use to wash them, the, the soap, and or perhaps even their mat they lay on or cushion. It's so easy for us to see it outside of this, right? But when it comes to us men, they say, oh man, you just, it's just your final form. It's how can androgenic alopecia be something when the same androgens that actually supposedly attack the follicles of women attack the follicles of people who have parasite infections, attack the follicles of people who have yeast infections, demodex infections, pathogen infections, people that go through sickness, people who go, all these things supposedly derive from androgens, not inflammation. But when you look at it, as I stated, all hair loss comes from acute follicle stress. And eventually, when it hits a threshold, the hair will be aborted. That's exactly what it is. It just so happens that inflammation is really good at causing abortions of terminal hairs. Now, we keep saying androg androgenic, androgenic alopecia. And I'm trying and I've been trying for years to find out 
how we can and what we can category we can put this in and and comparing it to the medicines and comparing it to the topicals you all use, the synthet the synthetics, the lab based solutions, the human ingenuity products, the bro science products, when it's all said and done, we know that it is based on an androgen reacting to inflammation. Androgenic alopecia is Another reason why it is, is because there is no way, no absolute way possible for me to be able to reverse a decade, over a decade of hair loss using simple foods or, or in simple tools for something that was designed by nature. If we were to look at androgenic alopecia as your dog losing fur, what would you do right now? You would simply stop allowing the dog to eat or do certain things in order to get the fur back. And if you notice when you stop, it does grow back. What is the difference? Because now I am growing hair and many of you all are regrowing your hairline using finasteride and minoxidil. And we have not even thought about this. How so? Why would we use a vasodilator on something that is gene based? Question. Why would we inhibit DHT when this is gene based? Question. Why does this happen to happen when there is some sort of other problem, rather it's dietary, rather it's uh, vitamin and nutrition, rather it is an androgen like estrogen um, being either neutralized or really the volume of estrogen is going down. Why is it that it's always associated with calcification and fibrosis of the heart for men? Why is it that we use prostate medicine when it is inflamed for hair regrowth? Think about it. <laughs> we're, we're saying that it is some sort of androgenic problem or, or, or androgenetic alopecia and it's based off of genes and you just nothing you can do about it. And it's irreversible and it's inevitable, which I call the two myths of balding. So how in the world could one twin not take um, medicines like finasteride? Right. And the other tw twin takes it and he keeps his hair. You saying, well, that shows that it's genetic. No, it shows that both twins have the same ailment and one of them did something about it. That's exactly what it shows. Sometimes we get so caught up into, quote unquote, science and listening to smart people and listening to these articles and listening to these people with agendas. We cannot see what reality is in front of us. Andro alopecia is. There's no way that we are able to reverse hair that's been gone for a long time using the simple principles of something like the path. That's what I've created. But there's many out there. Why are we dealing with vasodilation and circulation if it's genetic? So you mean to tell me. My genes tell my arteries, not only just in my heart, actually, but in my scalp to just stop. Just just get smaller. It also tells me to grow fibrosis and calcification. Right. It also gives me acne, tension, soreness, all these things, all these symptoms we see with this male pattern balding problem. And we say that this is a natural thing. How don't, why can't we just see it for what it is? It's a disease that is probably based off of the gut and we develop it over time as we age and the conditions get worse. And if we caught it in the beginning, as many of you did when you saw that you were thinning, you immediately stopped the problem. I've had so many men watch these comment sections. Hey man, when I started balding, I started taking finesse stride in 1992. Right. In 2005, you will hear these things. Yet. And many of you listening are saying, well, this is just 
No, it's not. There is no such thing as androgenic alopecia. That's it. Because if it's so, you need, you, that should be called androgenic alopecia should be for the woman and the male. The woman and the man. It should also be for cats and dogs. It should be for all animals that lose fur. It should be for it should be for everything that loses hair. It should be under androgenetic alopecia. So why would they say that's a man thing? Only because the male pattern balding, it looks the same, whether you're Asian or you're black or you're white, right? You get this little pattern, right? The pattern is just a human growth pattern. It has nothing to do with hair loss. It has everything to do with hair growth. This is why newborns are born looking like they can fit into the Hamilton Norwood pattern. Your baby may be born Norwood 1. Another child will be a girl and she's born Norwood 7. Look it up yourself. So the, the, the male pattern balding, how it happens, has nothing to do with genes and everything to do with anatomy. Kids are born that way. Babies are born that way. Look it up yourself. Okay. Because we put these two things together, it seems as if all men sort of go bald. And this is pattern that the body does. So it looks like it's just some sort of no. We mix that up. The male pattern balding, Hamilton Norwood, he was wrong, right? And many of the scientists were wrong. And yes, I'm a bro scientist saying this. They're wrong. It's a human growth pattern. It reverses as the conditions reverse. Number one. Number two, if this was final form or how we supposed to look, there is nothing you can do about it. I'm 5'7". I'm not a big guy, right? If I can reverse that and make myself 6'2", I would do that. There are things that you are that you cannot patch. You cannot make better. You cannot extend. You cannot. These are things you can't do, right? How can you take a supplement made by a pharmaceutical company or even made by me in my kitchen to extend your hair? Unless it is simply a condition that you are in that you are slowly reversing over time. So androgenetic alopecia, androgenic alopecia is simply acute follicle stress. Choose the stressor, get rid of the stressor, the hair comes back. Now, the takeaway message of this is if you get caught into thinking that you have something, then you think that in your mind that you cannot reverse it. You're not reversing androgenic alopecia. <laughs> You're not. You're not reversing your genetics. You're not. Your scalp conditions are not ideal. You're taking things in order to keep it stable, stabilized, and decent enough to keep hair. You do not have androgenic alopecia. There's no such thing. And when I made that conclusion that it was that's when I was able to reverse my hair loss. So that's my video for today. Let me know what you think in the comment section because that's where the goal is. And remember, if I can do it, you all can do it too. Let's get you back to the barber.